Welcome to College Physics Second Edition, Chapter 2, Kinematics. Kinematics are the, what we use to describe motion, such as displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. When we have movement in one direction or one axis, we do refer to that as one dimensional, which will help in defining all of our terms. We need to distinguish between displacement and distance. Distance is the total distance traveled, meaning it's what your pedometer will read or the odometer on your car. None of those things care if you're going north, south, right, left. They just do a total. Displacement is very different. Displacement is defined as change of position. So change of is represented by delta. Position is what we're going to use x and notice we're using vector notation, the arrow above the displacement. And we're defining displacement as final position minus initial position. So what displacement gives us is a straight line between two positions. Displacement is not affected by route. You only care about where you end and where you start in the straight line between them. Total distance traveled does depend on the route you take, which is a big distinction between total distance and displacement. Total distance is literally path dependent and does not matter what direction you move. Displacement is the linear distance between where you end and where you started, and the path is irrelevant, but direction matters. In this example, we have a positive two meter displacement. That is because of where we chose the coordinate system origin, nothing more. And because we had to choose the origin, we also have to choose what's positive and what's negative. So if we continue the number line over, that would be negative. And down here would be negative, which is important. Sign convention is very important with vectors. So in this example, knowing that, displacement will be final minus initial position. So final position is 3.5 meters. Initial position is at 1.5 meters which is why we have a displacement of positive two meters. That alone tells us her displacement is two meters to the right. Speed and velocity are again related. So I'll use S for speed, which is distance total traveled over the time frame, the total time to do anything. Now, velocity, we're going to say, is displacement over the time interval, which is slightly different. So here we have the time interval of interest is here, and displacement is here. So velocity is the rate of change of our displacement. These, the SI units for velocity will be simple. It is just the SI unit for displacement, which is meters, and the SI unit for time, which is seconds. So the velocity units will be meters per second. So for example, we have a 30 minute round trip to the store. The total distance traveled is six kilometers. The average speed is 12 kilometers per hour. So let's take a look at that. So speed is total distance divided by the time interval. So total distance to the store will be there and back. 
which will be six meters, so six kilometers total. And then the total time is 30 minutes or half an hour. And we're going to use hour because that's the way people talk. Which gives us speed of 12 kilometers an hour. Okay, now we do velocity is displacement over the time frame. And when we look at this, the displacement, we end where we started, which means the displacement is zero. And it doesn't really matter the time because it's zero, which gives us an average velocity of zero meters per second for this phenomenon. This is a good example of speed versus velocity. Again, speed looks at total distance traveled, velocity, you're only interested in the displacement. Acceleration describes how velocity changes with time. And again, velocity is a vector, which means acceleration is also a vector, which gives us phrases like this. So we have a plane coming in at a certain velocity, but it needs to decrease its velocity to come to a stop for landing. Okay, which means the velocity must decrease. And because we're doing change of, acceleration is defined as a change of velocity over time. That means change of is always final minus initial. And in this case, if velocity, the direction of motion is positive, that means the acceleration must be negative because the acceleration is we observe is a slowing of the speeds, which means the acceleration vector is opposing the velocity vector. And here we have the definition of acceleration is change in velocity over time. Remember, velocity is a vector, so sign matters, just like with acceleration. Let's do an example with an acceleration of a racehorse coming out of the gate. So here we have accelerate from a rest, which is zero meters per second, to a velocity of 15 meters per second due west. Now, notice one of the things we've done. We have established the coordinate system, the origin, and our positives and negatives. So one of the things we do in physics is we always write our variables. So the initial velocity is zero meters per second. Our final velocity of the horse is 15 meters per second. The time frame it took was 1.8 seconds. I want to know what the average acceleration is. Well, sign convention is an issue, which means really our final velocity is negative 15 meters per second because he is going west. So when we solve in for acceleration is change in velocity over time. Change of velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial over time. And we put in our negative 15 meters per second minus zero over the time frame of 1.80 seconds, which gives us a unit of meters per second per second, which is exactly what the unit is, meters per second squared. So if 15 over 1.8, we can relate displacement, velocity, and time in terms of graphs. When we plot and we get this curve here, well, velocity is rate of change of displacement or the instantaneous slope. 
So let's say here, down at the bottom, there's a slope here, there's a slope here, there's a slope here, there's a slope here. Notice the slope changes depending on where we look on this, this position graph, which means we get instantaneous velocities at different times because they're different slopes at different times. So the velocity graph here is the instantaneous slopes of the displacement graph per time. Okay, so velocity here clearly goes up. Now we're interested in the acceleration of the system. And again, what we're going to do is use slope. This is a straight line, which means we get we have a change in time for the run and a change in velocity for the rise, which means the slope is rise over run, change in velocity over change in time, which is defined as acceleration. So we do instantaneous accelerations here. But notice this, our velocity line is a line. So no matter where we take the slope, we get the same answer which is why the acceleration graph will be a flat line with a non-zero value. So here's the general rules. When we go to displacement velocity to acceleration, we get slopes. But when we go want to go acceleration to velocity to displacement, we're going to use area. This is how we move between displacement velocity and acceleration to acceleration velocity displacement. So if I am given one graph, I can build the other two. So for example, I'm given the velocity graph and I want to know displacement. So what I'm going to do So if I have the velocity graph and I want displacement, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the area under this curve to get to displacement, which is, this is a triangle, so that means area is one half base times height. That will move me, that will get me from initial position to final position in that time frame. and then fit a quadratic between the two points. Now, what if I want acceleration from the velocity graph? We just do what we did earlier. Pick two points, take the slope, and because it's a straight line, it's just a flat line. And that is how we can move between one graph to get to the other two graphs. Now that you understand the kinematics variables, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time, we can now introduce the kinematics equations, which are derived from definitions and the graphs. These three are the basics. What we have is final velocity here. I like a final here. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration time. Now this, the way it's written, is final position equals initial position plus initial velocity time plus one half acceleration time squared. Or the other way to write this one is just displacement. Is initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration time squared. Many times initial position is zero and will come out anyway. So that is not uncommon. But in the event that initial position is a non-zero, either definition will work as long as you remember that displacement equals in final position minus initial position. As long as you remember that, you can derive this equation. And then Thirdly, we have velocity, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus twice acceleration times 
Again, this is just displacement. Between these three kinematics equations, all predictors can be determined. In the event we are vertical, the exact same equations apply. It's just that you can dis you can remove the x variable with a y variable or a height variable because vertical displacement is height. Right now that we have all three of our kinematics equations and our definitions, we can now move on to some examples. In this question, we have a plot of velocity against time. So here we're interested in looking at the equations, the three, or three kinematics equations, and which one would we use? Well, one, we register it as a line. Okay. Second, we register that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Now remember what all that means. y axis, that's x axis. This is the slope. And that is the y intercept. That's what all those things mean. And when we look at our three kinematics equations, we are interested in something with final velocity as the y axis and time as the x axis. And the one that fits the bill is this one. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration in time. So let's look at how these relate. This is the y axis. This is the x-axis because time is on the x-axis, which will make the slope the acceleration of the system. And initial velocity is the y-intercept. So now we've connected the generic line of a formula with the variables in our kinematics equation. So. This is the kinematics equation we will use. All right, that's part A. Part B is from this best fit equation, what's the acceleration? Well, according to this, acceleration is slope. So let's use slope equation. So our initial velocity is zero according to this plot. Time is our variable, so the acceleration will be the slope which is change in velocity over change in time. There's our rise over run, which will give us a 20 meters per second minus zero divided by just do the total time of five seconds minus zero seconds, which gives us an acceleration of positive four meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Here is an example of an airplane with initial velocity, final velocity approaching the terminal, and we want to know the displacement. So let's write our variables. We know the initial velocity, 70 meters per second. Our final velocity is only 10 meters per second. Time frame involved is 40 seconds, and our acceleration is negative 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, we are interested in displacement during that 40 seconds. Okay, well, we have two velocities, acceleration, time, so we can really choose whichever kinematics equation has displacement. Turns out there's two of them. One's a quadratic, the other has squares in it also. So it really, in that perspective, doesn't really matter. So what we will do is, eh, I'll just choose the quadratic. So we get displacement is initial velocity time 
plus 1 half acceleration times squared. That's our kinematics equation. And then when we sub in, remember sign convention is very important. We have 70 meters per second times 40 seconds. That gives us a unit. Pay attention to units. Seconds cancel, which gives us meters, so everything's good so far. I'm going to go ahead and put my minus sign here because I have a negative acceleration. And the negative just goes right through. There's our negative acceleration. And then the time is 40 seconds squared. This, so this is how, again, we have units on the second, second squared against that squared. squared here here we go and then the units come out to meters so we're doing meters minus meters the units work out we can get an answer when things are falling what we have is in air versus vacuum on Earth, Galileo was the first to show that a feather can drop with the same acceleration as a rock. A feather and a rock can fall. That's what Galileo was the first to do this with a very crude pump. You can do the exact same thing in space. So we all know that in with the removal of air or air resistance, we do know that everything falls with the exact same acceleration on Earth and on the Moon. So the acceleration on Earth, we call G. It is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the direction is down towards the center of the Earth. So whenever we do an acceleration of something falling, we will use G. And G will always point towards the center of the Earth. Earth. So let's discuss an example where we throw something straight up in the air and it falls. So we have in this example, we start at zero where he throws it and the initial velocity is 13 meters per second when it reaches one second it is 8.1 meters high reaches a maximum height here now one thing to important is the velocity y at maximum height will be zero the reason why it's zero at maximum height is because the object is neither moving up nor down at that instant. So let's pay attention to what's going on. It leaves at 13 meters per second, rises and reaches a maximum height here, which is a Y component of zero meters per second. And it starts falling again until it reaches the level it was thrown. Now, Notice this, if the initial velocity is 13 meters per second and there is no air resistance, that means when it reaches here, right back to where you threw it, again, it is going 13 meters per second, but downward. So it's really negative because it's going downward. Now this is handy and it's because of symmetry because the displacement up and displacement down are equal the acceleration up and down are also equal that is why symmetry can be your friend so if we know the level when it was thrown we know its initial velocity we know the velocity in which it returns to that same point it's just downward just like in this example which is a little different. Here he releases a ball. All right, why is there? I'm sorry, he throws it downward at 13 meters per second. That means the velocity at this level 
and when he throws it up at the sub, it will be identical. Again, this is symmetry. And looking at the plots, so we have, let's see, oh, position versus time. Okay, let's go back. In this example, we have some graphs of position versus time. So notice, it's remember, the position is just height. This is the same as saying how high is it. So we throw it at different times, at different places, and eventually reaches where you threw it and falls past you. Okay. Notice what the velocity is doing. Velocity starts at 13 meters per second at maximum height. Notice here, maximum height. It reaches zero as expected. It reaches negative 13. When it reaches same time frame here, there's a negative 13 and then reaching past here. Now, one thing that may not be clear is why, what's happening. So this is, this velocity versus time graph is a straight line. So it doesn't matter if I take the slope here, slope down here, it'll slope over the whole thing, I still get G. And notice it's a downhill slope, which makes it negative. So notice what happens here. Here's our zero line, here's our negative acceleration. And it is constant for the entire trip because gravity does not shut off just because something changes direction or stops moving. One of the biggest hurdles students have is how to set up a problem when there's multiple, e multiple phases or events going on. So, Let's take a look at what happens here. This is a flat line. This is a slope, linear slope, and then this is a different slope. So when I look at the slopes of three, there's three distinct types of movement, types of velocities, or velocity behavior. There's three distinct velocity behaviors. Here, the acceleration is a flat line, which means the acceleration in this phase, phase one, equals zero. Here we have an acceleration for phase two, which is different than the acceleration for phase three. So because there are three distinct behaviors, there are three accelerations for this event, which means if we were to solve this problem, we would have to treat this in three phases. The Kinemax equations do cannot handle from the beginning here from point A to point B. It can't, the kinematics equations are not designed for that. The kinematics equations, as written, the acceleration is a constant during the entire event, which is why we have to have three events. Because there are three accelerations, there must be three events to solve for. So when we look at which has the greatest magnitude of acceleration, that means greatest slope. The greatest slope here will be phase two. The region with no acceleration means the velocity is a flat line, does not change, so phase one is the region without an acceleration, or the acceleration equals zero. This is another good example of which has the greatest velocity. So. When we look at this position versus time graph, what we see is the slope at different areas are different. So, so we're doing instantaneous slope. So slope A looks like this, slope of B looks like that, slope of C, D, E. Okay. Now, because I asked for greatest velocity, well, we're going to use number line rules which means negatives are less than positives. And zero is greater than all the negatives. So number line rules. So in this case, the slope, the area with the velocity of zero would be D. So the velocity at D is zero because it's a flat line. 
E is a bit negative. So we're going to count out E. So E can't not be the greatest in this scenario because we have some positive slopes. So now we're looking at the slope between A, B, and C. A is the winner because it has the steepest slope, which means it has the greatest velocity at time A. This is a good example of looking at what acceleration is doing in detail. We have a velocity versus time graph. Now remember, acceleration is the slope of the velocity graph. So here's the deal. Let's look at some points. So here's point P, some arbitrary point, some arbitrary point, some arbitrary point, another arbitrary point. Notice the slopes are different at different places. In this system, the acceleration is not a constant. The, and the acceleration is also getting larger.